hey there. Today it's time for another fountain pen shootout. And we shall be looking at two pens. And if I show you the pens, I think you can see why I think these warranted a shootout. Do those somehow look a little similar? Yeah, why? Right. So what I have here is a Sailor 1911 Large and a Mont Blanc 146. I'm not saying the design was copied. I'm not suggesting anything. All I'm saying is these pens are very, very similar. And I want to know how they perform side by side. I think someone actually asked for that, and I think it's it was a good idea. Um, so I'll just basically cover the you know the the, the very briefly the parts of the pen. I've, I have separate reviews of these, so if you want more details, check those out. Sailor 1911 Large uh, resin pen, black gold highlights, nice gold cap band, um, 21 karat gold nib, very smooth, very interesting. And this is a zoom nib. I'll show you what that means in the writing sample. Here we have a Mont Blanc 146. I think this is a fantastic pen. As far as I'm concerned, just the right size. and Not too large, not too small. Holds a very nice amount of ink. Uh, works very well, very pleasant. Um, great, great pen. Again, black, precious resin, uh, gold highlights. Uh, this is a piston filler. This pen is cartridge converter. So this one will hold a lot more ink than the Sailor 1911. Um, when it comes to price, uh, the 146 is quite a bit more expensive than the... Uh, um, well, quite a bit, yes. It is more expensive, at least, than the 1911. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So what you get with both pens is a decent pen. Looks classy, looks classic. Um, gold, a lot of gold. Uh, and a very, very black, undeniably black, and shiny and, and nice. Uh, size, well, pretty much the same size, right? Uh, these pens really look uh, quite a bit alike. Um, I would say about the same diameter of the grip section. Maybe the 146 is a little narrower, but I mean, really, look at it. It's, it's, it's pretty much the same. So the big difference here, I would say, is the, um, the, the filling mechanism. The piston for the 146 and the cartridge converter system for the uh, 1911. Now, I could go on about these pens for quite a bit, but I think the simplest thing to do is just show you a writing sample, show you what the pens are all about, and that's all there's to it. So, I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye bye. Two pens separated at birth. As you can see, this is a bit more high resolution than my webcam. Uh, these two pens are remarkably similar. I mean, not just the, the, the shape, but the size, um, the, the, the finish, the gold clips, the, the, the uh, gold cap bands, uh, even the, the... well, this is a piston-turning knob, and, and this is not. It's just an end. But, you know, it's, it's very similar, very... I mean, I'm not saying that they copied anything, but these are just two pens that really look alike. So I think that's a, a good reason to have a shootout. Now, usually, I, I show you how to take these pens apart in shootouts. The problem with Mont Blanc is that it's almost impossible to do so. I'm sure you can, um, but not without the proper tools. And the proper tools are not sold to private persons. So I'm sure you can somehow remove the nib and the feed. Um, there are two little uh, holes right there. I probably can't see it, but there are there are two little holes, one there and one over there. I have the feeling you put a, a type of tool in there and then you unscrew it or something, but I'm, I'm, I'm not willing to try that. I don't want to break the pen. Um, when it comes to the piston unit, I'm sure you can somehow remove that too, but again, that is something that I, you know, I, I, I'm not... that's not a risk I'm willing to take on a, a pen of this, this prize level. Um, the Sailor is a little bit easier uh, to the extent that uh, you can of course take out the piston uh, if I remember correctly yeah. this is one of those the, the piston, I mean the converter uh, this is one of those converters that you can take apart so you, you take off the metal bit and then you take off the piston turning knob uh, well the converter piston turning knob you take out the actual piston carefully 
and you get this little metal, uh, sorry, plastic, what am I doing? This plastic guiding collar, um, which you, so you have a five part um, converter unit. The nib and the feed are friction fit, so you can take them out. It's a 21 karat gold nib, which means it's quite soft, so be gentle with this. Be gentle and make sure that when you put it back, uh, there's actually, there are markings on there, so the, um, the uh, at least I thought I just felt those. Uh, yes, so the nib sort of clicks in place there. That's where you want to have it, and that's how you want to put it back. Of course, making sure that the nib tines remain aligned, etc. Um, there is a specific way this fits back in there. Um, there is a little notch here at the bottom end of the feed. Not well. Not sure how well you can see that, but it's it's there, um, and that also goes in a sort of guiding thing down there in the section. It's very difficult to show you a close-up of that, but you, 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 if you have one and you, you do this, then you, you'll see what I mean. Um, so those things align. You put them back in. I don't recommend doing this all the time, because I, I just hear the, the fins of the feed going click, 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 click when you put it back in. Uh, so I don't think it's actually meant to be used like this. Um, but you know me, living on the fountain pen edge, I just do that. But, again, you do so at your own risk. Putting that back together, ink up the pens. Waterman Florida Blue, basically nice ink. Uh, I use this for these shootouts because it is very well behaved, works well, uh, doesn't give me any startup issues, uh, strange stuff, unforeseen circumstances, none of that. Um, unfortunately, the 1911 has a very large nib, which made it a little difficult to get out the ink. This bottle of ink is slowly running dry because I use it quite a lot. Um, got that. Screw it back together. Then we have the 146. Note the beautiful ink window. I should become a fountain pen tour guide. Note the ink window on the left, early 14th century. We now move on. Okay. Keep your arms and legs on board the vehicle at all times, please. There we go. Right in sample time. On the left, we have hear how that nib sings. This is the nineteen eleven large, right? And on the right, we have. One forty six in broad. I'll, uh, no, I won't. I wanted to continue writing here, but then this is wet and I'll wipe it out. Okay, so I already told you that in the review of this uh, this pen, but the, the idea of the zoom nib is that you can make very fine lines if you keep the pen at a very steep angle. You can even use the reverse side of the nib uh, and you can. Um, I'll try to hold it like this so that you can actually see what I'm doing. Um, the lower you go, the wider the line becomes. Which can be an issue for people holding the pen at a very low angle, because then you get uh, this. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's absolutely marvelous, but it's very difficult to write with unless you have a huge handwriting. It's great to be able to lay down that much ink. I myself suffer from it a little bit because I tend to have a fairly low angle when I write. Um, beautiful, rich, juicy line. 
I don't use this pen on a daily basis. I don't use it that much because it's so wet and, and this beautiful fat line. It's it's fantastic, but it's just not always appropriate, right? Everyday quick notes. It's it's you blow through. You know what you call that? You you burn through your paper. You know at a huge pace. Whereas this Mont Blanc broad is actually quite a bit finer than this, right? Notice also, uh, I, I always love that over the lazy dog. Notice how the ink color differs between the two pens. It's the exact same ink. You saw me fill the pens from the same bottle. But this so so wide, such fat lines, very saturated, making it a very dark blue. This is this is this is much lighter. I always think that's that's funny. <laughs> funny. Um, smoothness? No, flex. Mont Blanc nibs have a bit of a reputation, I think, when it comes to flexibility. Now, the sailor is a 21 carat, right? So you might expect... But in fact... Yeah, it does open up a bit. It does give some line variation, but of course the whole nib is embodied line variation because of the way it's created, right? I already told you that. You can go from a hairline, or pretty much a hairline, to a felt-tipped marker line, um, which is pretty awesome. As to wetness, well, do you think this is a wet pen? <laughs> Look at that. It's like a cotton swab. I absolutely love this. I love wet fountain pens, and this is just, this is awesome. All right, let's have a look at the wetness of the 146. It's not as wide a nib, but it's still very wet. Okay, so as far as I'm concerned, those are the two pens. Um, so which one wins? Well, the Mont Blanc has a much larger ink capacity, so if that's what you need, um, then you should go for that pen. If you want a somewhat interesting, I'd almost say novelty nib, um, and I, I don't mean that disrespectfully, I mean it's just, you know, it's, it's a very interesting nib, the zoom nib. Then you need to get the 1911. Of course you can get it with other nibs, you can get it with a fine nib if you want. I mean, you don't have to go for this, this weird extreme nib. Um, I think it's fantastic though, uh, two very nice pens. Um, the 1911 large is quite a bit cheaper than the, um, the, the 146, so if price is an option, then or is an issue, then you, you may well go for the 1911 large. Um, both are fantastic pens, and I would hate parting with either. And that's pretty much all there's to it, so I, I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.